Good morning, it's David Wiegener here and that's what you do when you ring up someone or I don't say David Wiegener but I might do but anyway the date is the 28th of June Wednesday and it is 10.40 a.m. Right, some quick images from Canterbury and I'm also wondering what Kiwi is up to today and I've got a nice brevity game for you to show you quite good but it's probably got lots of mistakes but anyway I've got a game to show you today so here we have images of Christchurch City and here is in the cathedral and here's the cathedral which is no longer here see the cathedral is no longer there even though it is still there but it's been um, demolished almost from the earthquake so it's quite sad and there's um, the post office in the cathedral square and that's had damage too and there's the wizard the Christchurch wizard Jack or so he's the Christchurch wizard he's quite a nice guy to talk to interesting very intelligent and there is the square okay and these photos are quite old and there I'm not even sure what that one is I can't see what it is I'll find out that's um, also of the cathedral square and you can I thought it was you can see the red buses there the old red buses okay so that's my imaging for and of um, Christchurch Cathedral Square and thereabouts. So what's Kiwi up to? Me no no. I have to flip the board though, but I I think he's been away again. Okay, well I'm gonna get on to it. Find out where he's been. Oh, what's going on here Kiwi? Oh he's got skis, has he? Oh makeshift skis. He's got some skis here. He's got sunglasses so he must have been skiing. Yes I have been. I've been skiing. Where you been skiing? Near Wanaka. Wanaka? Where's that? I sent you a postcard. Well you've still got the thing. Look see there's the postcard from Wanaka there. Hey. Eh? There's Wanaka, see that? And so he's been, have you been up those mountains, Kiwi? No, been near Lake Tikapo. No, you haven't been Lake Tikapo. It wasn't Lake Tikapo, Kakapo. It wasn't Lake Tikapo. It was um, Mount, what, what is it called now, Coronet Peak. Um, that's pretty scary going up in the car. I think it's Coronet Peak. You, you got one lane of traffic only, one lane both ways only. So you meet someone on the road there, you have to do a big, um, big U turn. Or is that over the shot over or something like that? Oh, I think it's Coronet Peak anyway. So anyway, we better get on with our chess lesson for today, eh, Kiwi? Yes, you better hurry up because everyone's getting bored. What? They're getting bored? Yes, that's what I heard. Oh yeah, I've lost a subscriber. Yeah, I, I must be doing something wrong. Maybe they don't like Kiwi. What? Yes, they, they probably like Kiwi, but I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's me waffling or something like that, or not enough waffle. Okay, so we'll, thank you for the postcard from Wanaka. See, Wanaka, see? This is handwriting. Huh? To, to... <laughs> okay, anyway, well, um, can we take your skis away too? No? Okay, fine, we can't take your skis away. Right, we'll just move you over here. We'll sit you in here. We'll sit you down there. We'll put your skis down there, sir. Okay, now you want to go to sleep, do you? I suppose. So here we go with today's game, which is a, 
uh, Sicilian wing gambit. I quite like it. I've shown it before. I quite like it. It's actually quite good against the French too, by the way. The Wing Gambit B4. Quite good against the French. It's hard to meet for Blake and the French. Very sensible play from Black. Obviously black cannot take this knight. Well they can, but they render their rook to white on A8. So this was played yesterday, last night. So it was played on the 27th of June 2017. can be a wee bit cheeky by playing Bishop A3 you see Did I play Bishop A3? Oh, I think it did And so if Knight is taken on B5 I go Bishop E7 and then I'm attacking the Queen and I'm attacking the Rook so black can actually do it, but it loses material in my belief. But it might not be bad. We could just have a look at it. That's not very good. Uh, Black's got a rook and a knight for the queen and white picks up this pawn straight away and I believe this favours white I would probably just go down here and uh, look to move my queen here and my knight here and my bishop can come back here to join in. This is the main line, you should know that computer. Bishop a3, rook a3, see? So the pawn's pinned because the red line, you can see the red line. But if white just left their rook there, they would lose it. So this gives me this entry square for my knight. New mainline computer, you should know that.
I just move my rock to a place for itself on P1. What a nuisance I am now. What else is there? There is this, but that's no good because I can just take it and I remain with my piece able to go to D6 and black has to watch this pawn because I'm attacking it if the bishop moves I just take it with my rook etc so it's quite cool so um, black plays knight D7 again So, I can just take this now if I want. Can I? I suppose I can. It's a wee bit, a wee bit iffy because I can be met with rook b8, but then I've got bishop takes pawn. But I don't want to give this knight up. It's a very, very good knight on d6. It's deep in there, and black is hampered to... to um, to manoeuvre their bishop out because they have to look after this pawn so they could play b6 but if they play b5 this might move of course but if white black plays b5 I can just take it you see I can just take it with my knight or probably with my bishop and because the pawn can't be taken back there's a rook a8 and it's advantage just to white so it's white's move what it was my, my move now I played rook c1 now this must have bothered black no Knight f5. Now I don't take it with the knight, I take it with the bishop. So, um, if here, then I just um, take that d5 pawn straight away, no questions asked. So, black goes g f5. Now, so I've got this open, half open file for black. I have got a rook on here and a queen on here that can swing around to that square to to hitting black's position on the g file even though it's not open for my rooks or queen okay because there's a pawn in the way i can't put a rook here there's a there's a pawn in the way i can put a rook there i'm not saying that but i can't Put it on an open file or a half open file which is this is a half open file now after gf5 but i can move my rook up up or this rook can move up to here once i move this pawn out the way then i've got i can swing things over to there is what i'm trying to say So after gf5, I went c4 straight away. Now I could just uh, play this move next too, if I'm allowed to, just c5. So um, anyway, I'll, so I go um, c4, dc4, rook c4. Queen B6. Rook 
what B4. Queen C6. Now notice, I have to be careful. This is a big check here. Queen C1 is a big check because I can't do anything about it. So I do have to be careful. Can't be um, too keen in this position. I have to still be careful for my king. Always remember your king. Queen E3. F6 came to apply now. That's actually quite good. Rook c3, queen d5. H4, a bit of a sort of a no rule intent move. But the thing is, it also goes... Excuse me. It also gives <coughs> my king a square on h2, a left. Usually a left move is h3. As I learnt that word in uh, Bobby Fischer versus Boris Spassky for the World Championships in 1972. Out of their book, uh, that book, I read about what a left is. So I go h4, my opponent goes king h8. Rook b c4, see now this is kind of strangling the bishop on c8 for a move. f e5, threatening queen takes here. But um, I go d e5. Then comes queen d1. Now, if I didn't have my laughed for my king, then I'd have to do something like uh, knight back or queen back. And then I'd, I'd start losing. So if I didn't have my um, king h2 move here, I'd have to go knight e1. Okay, and that would be a pain. If I go queen e1, that would be no good because the queen takes queen. Knight takes queen, and there's still the problem of this bishop on c8 that's been attacked. So queen d1, I go king h2. Now comes rook g8. Now is rook c8. And now I believe my opponent made a mistake, and they went rook b8. I think they did a finger drop here, to be fair. I went knight f7, king g7, queen h6, check. King takes. Queen h7, check. Rook g7. Knight g5. And I believe my opponent lost on time, but that's the end of the position. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to have a look at this position, I'll show you it quickly. Uh, there's nothing better for black. Black cannot take this knight, of course, because it's check with the queen. So they have to move away from the, the swap. They can't move back here. Can't move here or something they have to only can only move here and then it's just checkmate okay that's the end of the story